Hello guys, it's Robert here and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about the possible acquisition of 7-Eleven from Alimentation Couchetard, which is basically just a convenience store company. They do own a couple of brands like uh, Max itself and Circle K, and they might be acquiring uh, 7-Eleven for $38 billion or 31. I saw two different articles, one said 38, one said 31, so I'm not 100% sure. And there has been some talks from socialists, stupid Keynesians, even though there's like no difference between the two, and a bunch of other people about, you know, crying about a stupid monopoly that could be forming when it comes to the convenience stores. And in this video today, I'm going to break down once and for all the argument about fearing uh, private sector monopolies because honestly it shouldn't be something that you should not fear of at all and i'm actually going to play a clip that i made a few months ago talking about private sector monopolies and how something that you should not fear so let's just play that clip but the only way a company can reach monopoly status in a proper free market without all these rules and regulations and everything is that they have to provide a product or service that's so good so efficient and at such low cost that no one can compete but at the same time though it benefits the consumer because let's say i sell lettuce I'm very good at selling lettuce. I'm so efficient. I end up taking up 100% of the market and I'm selling lettuce for, I don't know, three bucks a pound. I don't know, whatever. So let's say I'm so efficient and I take up 100% of the market and I'm selling them for three bucks a pound. And let's say I reach monopoly status. I know that I take up 100% of the market. I can't bring up my price from $3 to let's say 50 bucks for a pound of lettuce because no one's going to buy and then someone's going to come in and obviously price me out of the market. I'm going to lose my market share. So the only way a company can become like a proper monopoly, they have to satisfy the consumer's demands at a low cost and highest quality and no one can compete like that's their problem but the company's not gonna you know gouge these consumers because as soon as they raise the price like i just said from three dollars to fifty dollars for you know a head of lettuce nobody's gonna buy my lettuce anymore because obviously it's way too expensive no one's gonna pay fifty dollars for it and then someone's gonna come in and price me out of the market and i'm gonna lose my market share so at the end of the day all these rules and regulations really hurt consumers because a company can only convince me to buy their product they can't force me to you know obviously buy their stuff if they are gonna charge me a super high price or whatever it is i'm not gonna buy it they have to satisfy my my demands as a consumer in order to get my business so when it comes to private sector monopolies is honestly something that you really should not fear i mean at the end of the day you're going to voluntarily buy their products that you literally can't do anything to you but when it comes to government granted private sector monopolies i have a problem with that because these companies are inherently inefficient and they're being kept alive by the government through artificially low interest rates or just you know being bailed out when it comes to you know them having any problems so i do have a problem with that and I actually we'll talk about that later in the video but let's just get back into kushtard and 7-eleven so the talks of them being in a monopoly and just like price gouging consumers this freaking argument is completely irrelevant when it comes to convenience stores because everything that they sell is already way above the market price when you're going into a convenience store you know that you're going to be buying something that's once again way over the market price if i go to a convenience store at 2 a.m and i'm buying milk i know i'm going to pay like seven bucks a gallon or eight bucks a gallon or whatever they sell it for usually i don't really go to a convenience stores that often but already that's baked into the price people know that voluntarily when they go in there even when they go in there during the day to buy energy drinks or a bag of chips they're buying it way over the market price and yet people still go in and buy it so there's really no price gouging when it comes to uh, convenience stores because once again there's already a markup because of that convenience factor so nothing's going to be price gouged if uh, 7-eleven were to get acquired by kushtar because once again that premium is already baked into it so they're not going to just jack up their prices even more that prices will go up because of the uh, inflation tax so unfortunately that's something that we can't really do anything about because of the government money printing and everything but at the end of the day though you already have that freaking premium baked into it nobody's going to be price gouged if 7-eleven gets acquired by kushtar it just makes absolutely no sense and also the reason why convenience stores charge like a massive premium as well is because of the fact that they barely make any money on the gas that they're selling i mean they're getting taxed to death when it comes to that i was asking my friend who lives in canada he owns a gas station and he told me that he makes about two and a half cents per liter and pretty much like all the uh, money that he's making from it is going into taxes like i don't know how much it is per liter right now in canada but i'm pretty sure at the time that he told me when he was doing like the calculation because he actually like broke it down for me the government was making like 50 cents per liter and the guy was making like two and a half cents per liter and he told me that if there was like no taxes when it came to like gas and everything he could charge uh per liter once again like 40 percent below the current market price or like 50 percent below already automatically like all the money is going to the government when it comes to gases and because of the fact that they can barely make any money off that they have to charge massive premiums when they're selling things in their convenience stores so that's also baked into the price as well so once again the convenience factor which is obviously like a major thing and the second thing because they barely make any money off the gas that they're selling at their uh, gas station so just saying my point once again if uh 7-eleven does get acquired by atd there's basically like no changes with the price like nothing's gonna happen at all it's only gonna rise at the general like inflation tax rate but other than that nothing's gonna happen you're not gonna get price gouge or anything they're not gonna freaking jack up the prices to like 50 bucks to get some milk at 2 a.m like none of that is gonna happen at all it's just a completely stupid argument once again by the keynesians and dumb so switch that just don't understand anything when it comes to economics and also as well when it comes to like convenience stores brands and everything there's like so many of them out there like there's a uh, freaking bucky's right now it's super popular and when it comes to bucky's as well there's not like a lot of locations it's in like select states but at the same time though that place is like super freaking popular so that is massive competition when it comes to like 7-eleven or just any uh kushtar locations so right there that's already like a lot of competition like 
like there's basically a cult following when it comes to Bucky's. I haven't been there personally, but it just looks absolutely like insane. I would love to go to one one day. And when it comes to competition in the industry, there's like so many other brands like Quick Mart, there's freaking Grab and Go, Express Shop, Minute Mart, all this stuff out there. Like there's already going to be a lot of competition, even though 7-Eleven might get acquired by ATD. So once again, there's literally just nothing to worry about at all. And now talking about a government granted monopoly in the private sector is Air Canada. So now ATD is uh, located in Canada. That's like, you know, they're a tax domicile. So I'm going to be talking about Air Canada because obviously that's in Canada itself. So I'm going to talk about Canada, the country. Like, wow. But anyway, that airline right there, there's so many complaints to see about it on the internet, like all day long. People hate Air Canada so much. The freaking prices are through the roof. The customer service is freaking terrible. Everything about the airline, just people have so many complaints when it comes to it is absolutely insane, especially when it comes to domestic flights over there. It's the exact same thing in the United States. When it comes to international airlines, it is illegal for them to uh, sell domestic flights in Canada. And it's the exact same thing in the US as well. At one point that always gets made when it comes to all these government rules and regulations is to protect domestic companies. But if they cannot compete on the international scale, that's literally their own problem. I have debunked this point on the channel before, which you can check out right here for protective tariffs debunked and that is featuring henry hazlitt which is absolutely completely freaking stupid and the complete example of a government protected monopoly because why couldn't there be any competition right there when it comes to international airlines and uh just pretty much competing with domestic uh, airlines like that's completely stupid like if somebody's going to go from vancouver to toronto and then toronto to england let's just say it's british airways for example they can only bring people that are actually going from vancouver to toronto and then toronto to england so even if you're somebody like you know a canadian that wants to go from vancouver to toronto you have to do like air canada or WestJet or whatever the uh airline is that's actually located in canada British Airways cannot advertise that airline to like any other people who just want to go from Vancouver to Toronto only. So that right there is something that's illegal and Air Canada just charged it out the butt when it comes to like their domestic flights. Like I see so many complaints on TikTok about this company is absolutely terrible. We recently went to Ottawa for a work trip and when we looked up flights, they were literally $800 to $900 for a 45 minute trip, which was a big no from us. Apparently Air Canada will overbook their flights. They're one of the only companies in Canada from what I've heard that do this. They'll overbook their flights knowing that some passengers will not show up. You guys, I cannot believe that Air Canada literally took my bag from me so that I couldn't check it, takes it and then just throws it out basically. Don't ever fly Air Canada. They've lost my bag four times before. Let's play a word association game. I'll say a word, say the first thing that comes to mind. Sounds right? good. Uh, people are scum. All right. Water is a privilege. Flight delays are guaranteed excellent they honestly should have gone bankrupt in 2020 with the whole like you know pandemic fiasco and everything but basically they got bailed out by the freaking government even though they're freaking leverage to the hills their balance sheet was an absolute freaking mess and all this freaking garbage they should have gone bankrupt but they got freaking bailed out by the government and that right there is an example of a government granted monopoly in the private sector that i do not agree with if air canada was a freaking great airline and they were just charging super low prices and they were like the only airline in canada i would have no problem with that but that right there is an example of a government granted monopoly and nobody gives enough but when it comes to freaking Kushtar just acquiring 7-Eleven, even though they're not going to do anything to the freaking prices, we're going to freaking whine about that and block the freaking uh, possible acquisition. I don't know if it actually got blocked yet. It was just something that I was reading like a week ago. But also another example as well is freaking Google. Google is freaking free and people are complaining about a possible monopoly. You literally go on the freaking uh, website voluntarily and you use it. The most common search on Bing.com is for freaking Google. So what's like the complaint there when it comes to Google having a monopoly? They have the best search engine in the world. Now there's some things that Google just charged for as an example, like YouTube Premium and like their cloud storage. Those are only two things I can think of, but how much is YouTube premium a month? Like freaking 15 bucks? Like what are you freaking whining about? Google is literally free to use and you use it voluntarily. There's a reason why they take up like 85% of all the searches in the world is because once again, they have the best search engine out there. So I don't know what you guys are freaking complaining about. It's literally free to use and you don't have to use YouTube premium. Don't give them your money. It's really not that hard. I don't understand the complaint when it comes to freaking Google. You people just whine about anything and it's just absolutely ridiculous. So once again, just wrapping up this video, going back to uh, Akush Tard and 7-Eleven, there's nothing to fear when it comes to this freaking acquisition, like all monopoly talk is a bunch of freaking wish wash you can all just cry all you want and also just make another point as well is that grocery stores are also in competition when it comes to that as well because you can just pull up to walmart at like 10 50 p.m and pick up your milk rather than going to once again a gas station or like you know a convenience store to pick up the milk for like a way larger premium and walmart if i'm not mistaken used to be 24 7 as well once again they reduced their hours because of the pandemic and never went back to it but grocery stores if i do remember correctly because obviously i never really went there at midnight but they were open 24 7 if once again, I'm remembering this correct. I do get now that they have reduced their hours, but at the end of the day though, there's nothing to fear when it comes to this monopoly. Once again, just giving the example when it comes to Air Canada in Canada, that's literally a government granted monopoly right there. And none of you people are freaking whining. They should have gone bankrupt once again and let the free market just sort out the situation. But once again, government has to come in and just ruin it for everybody. Alrighty guys, it's basically going to be the end of today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like down below, subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you guys in the next video.